G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. If you missed the last episode, the uh, chuck adapter for the spin indexer, it's a link up there now. You can watch that first and come back and watch this one. Now, I've got a little project in mind uh, for the lathe. So I don't really know if it'll work or not, but there's just something that's been bugging me for ages so I want to try and overcome it. So follow me over to the lathe, just here, and we'll get on with it. Alrighty, so long time viewers of my channel will have watched me struggling with parting things off over the years and ending up with this. These horrible snapped off bloody parting tips. Now, uh, it's a small machine, so I went down to the thinnest parting tip I can get, only one and a half millimetres. And, you know, sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. A while back I made this up, it's a high speed steel one, I only use it for parting brass and plastic and you know, aluminium things like that. But parting steel is a different kettle of fish and I'm kind of tired of dealing with this crap. So I lashed out and I bought one of these. Now this is the smallest one I can get and the thinnest tip I can get is 2mm which is you know going to place more load on everything. Mind you, the fact that these are only one and a half millimetres probably increases my risk of breaking the damn things. But these don't have much tip hang out, and you know, and the more pressure you put on, the more that force back in. But there is a little something I've got to deal with, and just give me a moment while I move the camera and I'll show you what that is. Alrighty, so this bit of brass here had a centre drill in it, and so I marked it up with a bit of, uh, bit of blue ink. I faced it off, there was just a small dot left. Now this thing sat on top of there is just, I reckon, a touch above centre. Just a touch. So, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to put it into one of these things. It's just not going to happen. So what I've got in mind is to machine up a big block, and I'll look at this side even though it's the opposite side, that'll come out, sit on top of here, and then drop down over the side so that I can sit this literally at that height maybe drop it down just a little bit lower a couple of hundredths or tenths or whatever it needs and then just clamp the whole thing down but drop it down a bit lower still so that i can sit it up against the edge and always know it's going to be square to this block so and then make a clamp up for the top basically like i did with this thing here so that when you when you bolt it up it pulls down make, keeps it captive i don't think we can really see that or not keeps it captive there there's a little bit of taper in there which you know pulls this whole thing back in that way when you tighten it and keeps it all done so basically it'd be a larger version of this to hold this thing but that's what i got in mind but anyway we'll get on with that Alrighty, so it, what I intend to do is weld these two bits together. So I've got to get them out of there now, put some big champers on the edges, weld them up. Weld the two bits together and make one big piece out of them. Alrighty, so the fly cutter awesomeness continues. Beautiful finishes on that. Alrighty, so I'm just going to duck down the road and get my daily iced coffee. When I come back, I'll draw some pretty blue lines on this thing and show you, or we'll give you a better idea of just what it is I want to do with this thing. Alrighty, so 
I hope you can see this. It's not, uh, I can see it where <laughs> you can or not. It's another story. So, all right, so all of this bit here has to go, right? And this bit in here has to go. And in there, there will be a little two, millim two millimeter wide slot where the tool will fit. If I could find it, I'd show you. But anyway, uh, now, the way, and then all of this in here, that bit there has to be cut out five mil deep. And then there'll be, it'll drop down there so that theoretically, when I sit this on here, it'll pull over to that edge there. Now, really, uh, I'm a little worried about the strength of this in here. So the way I see it, I have two options. I either mill a piece out of there, out of here, so that that can sit down into it like that, or I leave it hanging out over the edge and I make up a plate that bolts onto here so that it carries the base of it. So, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of force being pushed down on the bottom of that. So that's where we're at. We'll get into this some more tomorrow. Alrighty, I don't know where you can see that, probably not very well. I thought I'd save you the boring bits of hogging all of that out of there this morning. Uh, I've got that down, I've taken the absolute minimum off it to uh, to get it sort of flat. And I've gone into, that's seven millimeter thick, or it's actually just a tad under at 6.9. Now I need to cut a two millimeter slot in there and I'm gonna use this. Uh, there's a bit of a story behind this one, I ordered that probably three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and it showed up about a week and a half after we uh, ordered it. And this is how it showed up, like that, just an empty box. Unbelievable. So I got in contact with the supplier and said, what the hell are you doing sending me empty boxes? You know, like, and uh, they said, I'll send us some photos, and then they come back and said, oh, we're really, really sorry, just uh, put in for a refund and then reorder it, and we'll make sure you get it. So I put in for a refund, and I had it within an hour, which is really unusual, because normally it takes days. But anyway, but I've got it now. This thing's freaking red hot, I can hardly touch it. So I'm just going to let that cool down a bit, and I'll set this up, and I'm going to cut a two millimeter slot in there for this to fit into that way. Like that. Oh, this thing's two mil. It's supposed to be two mil. Ah, oh, it's only 1.6. That's a bloody hassle, isn't it? What a pisser. What a pisser. Shit, what am I going to do now? Ah, uh, well, I'll cut a two mil slot in it and I'll figure something out to fix it. Beautiful. All right, so over a nice juicy Australian sirloin steak lunch, I concocted this plan like this. Wait, I can focus, damn it, focus. Right, so what I did was I ran a six mil end mil down through here, 0.35 deep, and then I touched off this little cutter on here and here, moved it in 1.8 millimeters that way, which is about as far as I could go and down this way 0.4 so that what I effectively cut in there was a 1.6 millimeter slot and as you can see that fits in there quite nicely uh, and actually it won't slide all the way in there but if you push it in push it down which is probably perfect it'll pinch it in there gets me what I want so now I need to knock a bit off the top of there but I won't bore you with that and then I have to come back up in here and mill this down in here about uh, 12 millimeters or so at the level of that edge there Alrighty, so that's almost that for uh, the machining on this side of it now. Uh, there's uh, one thing left to do, and I'm going to leave that till tomorrow morning because it's getting late in the day. I want to machine a little V 
down into the bottom corner down in here so that sits now just a little proud of the top of this so that it will be you can clamp it down that way and the little V in there will help pull the clamp plate down this way and in to clamp the thing solid in there but that's a job for tomorrow Alrighty, so what I did this morning was uh, I used that little 2mm cutter I cut this with to put an undercut in here and then I've touched this off on the bottom here and then came up a millimetre made a pass, came up to a mil and a half, made a pass then came up to 2mm, made a pass then came up to 2.25mm and made a pass so uh, that will give me, oh, let's stop this thing and get that out of there Alrighty, got a fair bit of deburring to do on this, but as you can hopefully see here now, there is uh, there's a little sh a taper that goes down into that groove, and that will allow me when I make up this top plate to put a bit on the back, so that as I tighten the bolts up, it will not only clamp it down, it will pull it inwards as well, to pull it up tight against this face here. So I'll get it all deburred, and anything left to do on this part here now is to drill some holes, drill and tap some holes in there uh, and we have to drill a hole on the top once we figure out where it's got to sit and now I've got to work out how much I need to machine out of the bottom here to uh, get this up to the right height. Alrighty after some very careful measuring I've come to the conclusion that I need to remove six millimeters from this so I'll get into it try and make you watch all that I'll uh, show you a bit of the start and bring you back towards the end. It's going to take a while. had a major stuff up with that uh, when I was roughing it out I was taking it down one millimeter at a time because that's about as deep as I can cut without making too much noise and on the four millimeters in this cut across here the second last cut it suddenly started getting very very noisy and it was getting louder and louder and louder and then I looked at it and I'm going oh shit the bloody collop chuck came loose and it pulled the, the cutter out nearly a full millimeter so lucky it wasn't on that last pass it would have been a right bloody stuff up but anyway I'm pretty sure I'm just about bang on six mil in there problem with is I had to reset the cutter so and uh, so because of that on the last pass I only went down to 5.7 millimeters hoping that if it wasn't right I could, I could clean it up a bit but at the moment it's measuring just about bang on six millimeters so I'm going to set up a dial gauge on here and just check the heights between here and here and see what it is alrighty so that's set bang on zero I've got to demagnetize it move it but, so it's not the most accurate way of doing things but you can see it's 0.1 over six millimeters so what i want to do now is uh, just machine the base on the solid tool post and just hang a sec i'll move this camera Alrighty, so i had a look i didn't want to uh, cut any out of here if it was going to lower the amount of base there was for this thing but i've had a look and i can take four millimeters off here without reducing the amount of base that's here for this thing to sit on so that's what I'm going to do. Alrighty, so while you guys weren't looking here this afternoon, I made this tab up here so that uh, this can sit down on top of it to take up some of those forces. So now I'm going to machine in four millimeters and down six millimeters, but not in one go. <laughs> Thank you. 
right in case you didn't notice I left that sitting up a little proud so I could just knock the top off it make sure it was all in line Alrighty, so how does it, how does it look? Looks pretty bloody good to me. But anyway, um, I'm going to put the hole drilled, drilled in here now so I can bolt it on, put it onto the lathe and check for the tool height. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty damn good to me. Uh, that looks to be about on center, if anything, just a touch below. You know, maybe a hundred, that hundred that I, the discrepancy I found in there. Alrighty, so the next cab off the rink will be to make the little clamp plate to hold this uh, cutter in place. Now, if you were wondering why I, I chomped into the top of this with those milling cutters, uh, this is not <laughs> staying there. That's just a 10 mil threaded bit I found in the scrap box. I want to make a little dome piece that fits out on the top here and I put those undercuts in there so that I can make it a press fit into here. I don't want to weld it in because I want to blow all this when I'm done. <laughs> Alrighty, after a little bit of tweaking I finally got this looking the way I want it to look and just about right. So all I need to do now to finish all this bit is to drill three holes in here, tap three threads in it so I can put three bolts to clamp it in. And that'll be just about finished and all I have to do then is uh, make the piece that I want to press into the top there. And we'll be done short of blowing it. At this point in the video, I'd like to thank my patrons for the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. You can sign up down there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron, there's always buy me a coffee. And there's a QR code on the screen there. You can scan that. Or there's always that thanks button down there. Alrighty, so while you guys weren't looking, I've made up, I've drilled and tapped the holes in this... Uh retaining plate and I before he cheated I uh, checked it out I want to see how close to center I ended up and I've parted off there's just the slightest little tip there but we'll do it again I'm going to call it at that and I'm going to get this off here and machine up that bit to put on the top here So does it work? Damn right it works. Raining here at the moment. Get that out of there, it's gonna be red hot. I'll just finish the top off a bit. Alrighty, so there it is. All blued up, ready to rock. I mean, you saw there before, I parted this thing off with it, so we know it works. Fits on there beautifully. Perfect. If you enjoyed watching me make this, how about giving it a great big thumbs up and smashing that like button? Because you know it kind of helps me out. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this. Um, it's a little bit different, something different. 
and uh, I'm pretty sure it will uh, solve my breaking bloody tips problem all the time. Yes, I'm hoping it will. So that's it for this one, and I'll uh, see you all next time. Bye bye.